Okay, good morning. Welcome back to Tiplo TV. Thanks for joining the Average Golfer. Uh, back off a week's holiday, back at Four Golf in Chester, and uh, ready to get stuck into another club review. So I'm looking out to what is a sunny morning in the UK in October. That's a rarity, isn't it? Anyway, on to this morning's, uh, well, at least where we're going to start off in terms of the reviews. It's tailor made, it is the MCGB iron. This thing is absolutely packed with technology. It even looks like it's packed with technology. There's so much going on in and around the uh, club head. Uh, it suggests, like I say, that there's um, lots of things happening. Let's see, uh, take a little bit of a closer look at those. Okay, so what we've got in terms of technology built into this club head, as you can see, um, it's got quite a few sort of bells and whistles, let's say. So the CGB pushes the limits of irons engineering for maximum distance throughout the entire set. That's reading from TaylorMade's website. Two milli face thickness, very, very thin face. Uh, every iron achieves consistently high COR, making it our fastest set from pitching, four to pitching wedge ever. Again, major, major claim by a manufacturer. Uh, claiming that their technology is pushing the boundaries once again. Uh, combine this with ultra low CG placement and golfers will achieve high trajectory and optimized spin rates. Now then, like I said there, bold claims yet again by Taylor Made, fastest ever club um, from four through to pitching wedge and irons. So what does that exactly mean and how does that translate into hitting golf balls for the average golfer. The other one I'm interested to see, this is claiming high launch and high spin rates. You know I struggle with spin, so let's see how this performs in the hands of the average golfer. Can I get the ball out there? Long carry, good feel, good spin number. Could this be the ultimate iron? Let's find out. Okay, so camera in position, all good to go. You've heard what Taylor made had to say, me reading from their website there, but uh, what do I actually think when uh, club sat behind a ball and first opinions on looks? So, this is for me going back to what we talked about in recent weeks, how game improvement irons have improved significantly for me in the last few months because they've managed, the manufacturers have packed lots of technology into a better looking, smaller, compact club head that may appeal to a a broader range of players. And when I say a broader range, I'm talking about people like me who perhaps preferred a smaller club headed address, less bulky. Now then, the CGB iron does the complete opposite of that in my opinion. So first of all, you've got to ask yourself what you like in terms of looks and aesthetics when a golf club is sat behind the ball. This is again a very, very bulky game, super game improvement iron as I would expect to have seen in recent years. So once again, very thick top line. This has got a lot of meat all in around the club. It looks heavy, you know, it looks as though there's a lot going on in this club. Um, so for me straight away, it's not something that would appeal to me in terms of the eye. It is too bulky to start with. That's not to say it won't appeal to a lot of other golfers out there. So what we're gonna do as ever, hit some golf balls, let's see if these claims by Taylor made ring true in the numbers that we managed to achieve on, uh, on Skytrack this morning. So let's get started. Okay, so that's golf balls hit. Let's have a look at the numbers, see what Skytrack says, and I'll tell you exactly what I thought the feel of this golf club. Okay, so an interesting one that for me. Uh, like I said, in some ways, having seen and reported back to, uh, to you what I felt about game improvement irons over the last couple of months, I felt this was almost like a backward step because 
like I said, this will appeal to many golfers, no doubt, but like I said, and I'm going to repeat what I said earlier, this is a very, very bulky club. It is back to the traditional what you'd expect to see from, um, from a game improvement iron. I'd like to see the head to head between this and the M2 because, um, and probably a video I'll do very, very shortly, because to all intents and purposes, looks, feel, I certainly had the kind of concept of the M2 still ringing in my mind and then it begs the question, well, why does this club exist when the M2 is already out there in the marketplace? So yeah, a bit confused already by this one. Um, again, just in terms of loft, which I didn't mention throughout the video, this club is lofted at 29.5 degrees, the M2 7 iron is 28.5 degrees, um, so once again, extremely strong lofts, but what I will say, the ball flight, and again, if, we, if I throw the numbers up first of all, and we'll talk these through, this is the interesting bit. If you struggle to get this ball airborne, then at 29 and a half degrees with a loft on a seven iron, you wouldn't expect to be, well, I wouldn't be expecting to see a launch of on average 21.6 degrees, which is just once again shows that's where the technology is, um, this ability to get this high launching ball Ball speeds once again very very high, 119 on average. Um, the thing that I will say about this that I've been very very impressed with and it rings through, as you know my spin numbers are low but for this type of iron um, lowest spinning was 4,000 revs, highest spinning being 5,001, average 4,500. That's a pretty decent number for me. Like I said, don't be reading in there again what you would necessarily achieve. But if I would say that with a super game improvement iron, I could be as low as sort of below 4,000 in terms of spin, then I'll give TaylorMade their claim that this is, um, they've managed to achieve a spin rate um, in a game improvement iron so yeah I've got that uh, especially with the shots that I hit I turned a lot of balls over as you know right to left which is generally my swing type and again the offset that's in this club certainly certainly wouldn't be suited to my game uh, so I managed to pull a few hook you could almost say down that left hand side it was long without being um, ultra long. It was, uh, what do we get? So 176 carry, you'd say again, the dispersion was quite good, 175 to 181 in terms of the dispersion between uh, longest and shortest. And like I said, the ball stopped fairly quick. In summary, you kind of get the gist throughout the whole review that I'm a bit confused where the club sits really. Um, I'll do the head-to-head -head with the M2 and try and work out the comparisons there. I suppose overall I would say the biggest difference between this and the M2 is the spin number from the previous test that I've done and that's from my sort of memory, I might have that wrong even, but I, I think that that's the biggest uh, improvement. The looks, feel and sound, I think to all intents and purposes, very, very similar indeed and uh, not quite ticking the boxes for me, I'm afraid, this one, but it is just one opinion of the average golfer and. Uh, if you've tried them, stick your comments down below. See where you think these fit into the uh, to the broader picture out there in the uh, in the world of golfing irons right now. Always happy to hear from you, and I'll do my very best to uh, to reply where possible. As ever, thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you like the video, and like I say, comments down below. And I'll see you very very soon, which will probably be M2 versus the CGB, and see if I can find out what the difference is from TaylorMade.